Okay, how we doing folks? Rich Van Tassel here with you Saturday, October 8th, giving you the game picks for week 5 of the NFL season. The teams on by this week are the Kansas City Chiefs, the New Orleans Saints, the Seattle Seahawks, and the Jacksonville Jaguars. I'm only recording audio today. Uh, the video isn't really giving me too much cooperation as of right now, so we'll just do the audio, send it up like this, and... Um, you guys can check it out from there. So we're starting first with the Philadelphia Eagles. They are traveling to Detroit to play the Lions. Philadelphia, of course, is 3-0 coming off their bye week. Detroit is 1-3. Injuries for the visiting Eagles, only one listed. It is questionable. Benny Logan, the defensive tackle. For the Detroit Lions, DeAndre Levy, the linebacker, Ezekiel Ansa, defensive end, are out, as well as Brandon Pettigrew, the tight end. Tavon Wilson, the safety, and Don Juan Carey. Wow, I didn't even know there was a Don Juan in the NFL. Is <laughs> are both questionable. Now, Philadelphia off the bye week. Carson Wentz has played very well. Their schedule hadn't been the most difficult, but they did pound the Pittsburgh Steelers right before they went on their bye week. So you certainly got to give Philadelphia credit there. Carson Wentz playing very well, very efficient thus far this season. You look at him, he has five touchdowns to no interceptions in comparison to Matthew Stafford who has seven touchdowns to four interceptions. Stafford has thrown for over 400 more yards than Carson Wentz has, but look at the difference in records. Detroit is 1-3, Philadelphia is 3-0. and oh. So you certainly got to give Carson Wentz credit there, and it's just the same old story with Matt Stafford. As far as this game, I think it could be a trap game for Philadelphia, playing a down team, a desperate team in Detroit, coming off the bye week, so I expect it to be close in that regard, and I wouldn't be surprised if Detroit was able to win this game. However, I am not picking them to win this game. I think Stafford will turn the ball over, and Carson Wentz will continue to impress in this one. I like the Philadelphia Eagles having to pull away late, possibly being in a competitive game where they get uh, fall behind and have to come back, but I like Philadelphia in this game, 27-23. to Next up, the New York Jets at 1-3. They are traveling to Pittsburgh to play the Steelers, who are 3-1. They spit that bad taste out of their mouth following the Philadelphia loss with a nice win over the Kansas City Chiefs last Sunday night. For the Jets, the injury report. Darrell Rivas and Jalen Marshall, a cornerback and wide receiver, respectively, are doubtful. Bryce Petty, the backup quarterback, and Brandon Bowman, the tight end, are out. Quincy Anuwa, wide receiver, is questionable. For the Pittsburgh Steelers, all listed as out. Marcus Gilbert, offensive tackle. Robert Golden, safety. Ryan Harris, offensive tackle. Roosevelt Knicks, fullback. And Cody Wallace, center. As far as the New York Jets, they've got to stop turning the ball over. Ryan Fitzpatrick has really, really been going back to his old ways. He was never this bad in the past. Now, a lot of it is, he, I think he's falling behind and he's trying to force the issue. Everyone talks about, and I certainly concur with this analysis, that Ryan Fitzpatrick is a very, very competitive guy, and I think at times that gets in the way of what he's trying to do. And it's not uh, been any different thus far this season. You look at them, they're falling down in games to Seattle, especially that Kansas City game, and he just wants to force it and force it and make the play and make the play. And unfortunately, when especially when you're down in a situation where the other team knows you're going to be passing them all the time, it really becomes very difficult, but four touchdowns to ten interceptions through four games is not good enough. Antonio Brown, he's been spectacular thus far this season, and with Darrell Rivas being doubtful, and even at Darrell Rivas at this stage in his career, not really a situation where I feel he'd be a good matchup for Antonio Brown. I look for him to have a big, big day in this game, and the Jets to really struggle. I don't expect the turnovers. If the turnovers do happen, don't be surprised if Geno Smith comes into this game for the Jets, but I'm not expecting Fitzpatrick to turn the ball over. I think the Jets' defense will get pressure, and as long as they're not turning the ball over, they'll remain competitive. But the Jets never beat the Pittsburgh Steelers anyway, so I'm taking the Steelers 27-20 to as the Jets continue to slide thus far this season. Next, the New England Patriots at 3-1 and one are traveling to Cleveland to play the 0-4 Browns. Of course, Tom Brady will be back from his four-game suspension. The injuries for the New England Patriots. Rob Gronkowski, tight end. LeGarrette Blunt, running back. Julian Edelman, wide receiver. And Jimmy Garoppolo, now the backup quarterback, are questionable. Brandon Bolton, the running back, is out. For the Cleveland Browns, one questionable. Tremont Williams, the defensive back. The rest are all out. Seth DeVale, tight end, Randall Telfair, tight end, Cameron Irving, offensive lineman, Austin Ryder, the center. So in this situation, 
You look at Tom Brady coming back. New England had their loss last week against Buffalo. Hey, they went 3-1 and one without him. They're still in first place in the division, so they certainly got to be feeling good about themselves. Cleveland at 0-4, they are a complete mess. You know Brady's going to look out, come out in this game and look to punish the Cleveland Browns. So what chance do the Cleveland Browns have? Of course, I would say none. Cody Kessler has played okay. They no longer have Josh Gordon, of course. Tyro Terrell Pryor has been able to catch the ball well. But still, you look at this game on paper and you think there's no way Cleveland has any chance to win. And certainly, if they were playing at any other point in the season, I would agree that Cleveland has no chance to win this game. But it's tough for teams to go 0-5. Now, I'm still picking the Patriots to win. I just want that to be out there, though. That I in no way would be surprised if Cleveland wins this game, especially with a Tom Brady who hasn't played in five weeks. It's just one of those situations where Cleveland very well may come out to win this game. And frankly, I want to pick Cleveland to win this game just because of all the aforementioned things. It's very hard to go 0-5 and the rusty Tom Brady. But I'm going to give it to the Patriots. And if I'm going to pick the Patriots to win, I'm not even going to expect it to be a close game. I'm liking it to be 31-14. to So I know I'm kind of on two ends of a spectrum here saying that the Patriots are going to win 31-14. to But don't be surprised if they lose. But you have to just look at the certain uh, outside issues going into this game. In professional football, it happens that teams are not apt to go 0-5. But, you know, this Cleveland team may struggle to win two games this year. And I'm being serious with that. They are really, really in a bad way. Okay, next up, the Chicago Bears at 1 and 3. They are traveling to Indianapolis to play the Colts who are also 1 and 3. The injuries for the visiting Chicago Bears all listed as questionable. Sherrick McManus defensive back, Tracy Porter defensive back, Josh Sitton guard, Danny Trevathan linebacker and Willie Young linebacker are all questionable as we just said. For the Indianapolis Colts, Dante Moncrief, wide receiver, is out. The rest are questionables. Robert Mathis, linebacker. Joe Reed, score. Robert Turbin, running back. Darius Butler, cornerback. Wow. Um, Indianapolis, really, really disappointing. They've been disappointing since Andrew Luck went down last season. And basically, towards the end of the 2014 season, the team really started to play bad. And they're not getting it together. Their offensive line is not doing Andrew Luck any favors or the team any favors for that regard. And, of course, Joe Reed's their guard may be out. He is listed as questionable. The Chicago Bears with Brian Hoyer, they got the win last week. They have a chance to get to 2-3 and three here. And certainly while Minnesota is riding high in that division, they're not necessarily out of it by any means, even in the division. And you never know about a wild card. They're still early. There's still 12 games left. There will be 11 out of this one. I think people seem to forget how many games uh, there actually are in the NFL season. So Chicago has a lot to play for in this one. And I think they have a chance to beat up a really bad, a really struggling, and a very, very dysfunctional, as of right now, Indianapolis Colts team. So let's see if Brian Hoyer can continue to play well and make the plays necessary. However, the defensive injuries or the potential defensive injuries to Trevathan and Tracy Porter could be a problem. And basically, all their injuries are to the defensive side of the ball, but those guys especially are their better defensive players. Not much of a running game for Chicago, which could be an issue. Indianapolis, surprisingly, is still running the ball very well with Frank Gore, who's just below four yards per carry. So I'm surprised they're not giving him the ball more. But look for Alshon Jeffrey to have a big day because the Indianapolis secondary is nearly as bad as the Indianapolis offensive line. So I'm taking the Chicago Bears to get the tough win on the road, 20 one two seventeen. I think it'll be a low scoring game, even though these two teams are not great. Uh defensively, their offenses have certainly, you know, issues with the offensive line to Indianapolis and Chicago not being able to run the ball. Where well, you'd look at it and you could see just a sloppy game all the way around, but I expect Chicago to get the win in this one. Alright, the last for part one of our game picks, the Tennessee Titans. Traveling to Miami to play the Dolphins. Again, another weak game in this situation, as you just had with the uh, Indianapolis Colts and the Chicago Bears. Two 1-3 and three teams. Tennessee is on the road. Their injuries, three listed as out. Al Woods, nose tackle. Denora Searcy, safety. And Cody Riggs, cornerback. Jason Amaro, their tight end, is questionable. For the Miami Dolphins, Arian Foster, running back, doubtful. Three are out. Jordan Cameron, tight end. Koa Misi, linebacker. Xavier Howard, cornerback. And Jelani Jenkins, their linebacker, is questionable. 
Miami just can't seem to get it together. Ryan Tannehill has not been consistent enough since coming into the league, and we all know that. However, you want to talk about a guy who's really not coming along, and that's Marcus Mariota. Already 56 incomplete passes on only 136 attempts. That's really not good enough. Four touchdowns to five interceptions. He has way too many games where he is well below 50% passing. That's just not good enough. DeMarco Murray quietly is putting together a good season. 66 carries, 340 yards. That's well over four yards per carry. And he already has three touchdowns. So he's proving that he can be a solid runner, even without the solid Cowboys offensive line. Last year in Philly, of course, was an aberration. But if you remember, even before that line was completely put together in Dallas, he was still having some good seasons. So look for DeMarco Murray to get a heavy dose in this game. Uh, you look... Conversely, on the opposite end, Miami's top rusher is Jay Ajay, who only has 75 carry, 75 yards this season. Not good enough, Just especially with the way Ryan Tannehill's playing. So the more it's going to be put in Ryan Tannehill's hands in this game, the more issues that are going to present themselves. He is another guy who has 50 incompletions on only two more passes, 138 passes for Tannehill compared to Marcus Mariota, 136. Has a lot more yards. Actually, not a lot more yards, but over 100 more yards, 6 touchdowns to 5 interceptions. Tannehill is not consistent enough with this offense. He just can't move the sticks, he can't move the chains, and the way that they're not running the ball, it's not going to give them enough uh, for the rest of the season. Will it give them enough against a bad Tennessee team? I don't think so. I think Tennessee is going to get the win in this one. I think Tennessee is going to be a little improved than they were from last season. I think this is one of those games that if you're going to show you're at least a somewhat improved team, you got to be a bad Miami Dolphins team. Tennessee is able to get it done. I think that uh, Mariota is going to limit the turnovers and they're going to actually score some points in this game. 27-16 to 16 in favor of the Tennessee Titans. All right, in a little bit, we will do uh, the next part of the Week 5 game picks. Be sure to stay tuned for that, and we'll see you all in a little bit. Thank you.